So, using these aluminum bars here, which was basically the uh, heat sink backing for some four foot LED strips, LED tubes. Um, <clears throat> so, I'm going to start testing with that and maybe at some point I can get it in resonance but right now it's still not and this is just the basic demonstrations of the high voltage high frequency nature of the actual circuit with just two random caps again just to form the dielectric one is actually the aluminum cap one is the Leyden jar cap and so clearly different capacitances different voltage ratings different internal resistance I basically got that deal going down and then I've got it shorted right now up at the top with that fat screwdriver and that's got a solid connection um, and I've got these two loads at the moment um, because I don't really have it in resonance I don't have all the ideal setups um, using these LEDs work well enough for the time being because they light up well from pulses but what's cool is uh, you know the fluorescent doesn't really light up very well but what's cool about uh, the LEDs lighting up is because I've got them wrapped with these little copper wires there um, you can really see some little baby arcs jumping around there so it you know it gives you the impression that there's some decent voltage there that you probably wouldn't want to touch um, if you're sliding those contacts around but you know it's totally fine there is no high voltage at least that will hurt you there problem is now that I've added these bars here it's more or less turned more into a the, uh, transmitter so it's kind of like a Tesla coil a uh, very low level one with you know super low voltage but it still kicks out a lot of radiation so now it messes with all the electronics that are nearby and sometimes it'll kick the phone out what it likes to do is since I've got a computer in this room it likes to bring up some window um, that asks me if I want to format one of my hard drives, but it brings it up tons of times. So <laughs> every time I run this with the computer on, I have to go over there and click cancel like 50 times to close these windows that it's asking me about. But uh, yeah, you see the little arcs there in the connections. That's on both of them. You know, I can touch both ends, no problem. It's no big deal. Um, but it sort of looks dangerous a little bit. <laughs> yeah, those light pretty good. And... The fluorescent actually takes a little bit of uh, work sometimes with the arc. Fluorescent doesn't really want to want to go right now. Oh, there we go. So now. I've just moved them down a little bit, can't really see, so now I've got the uh, fluorescent going. These guys. Cut that back on. <clears throat> and so you can see that's kind of cool. Um, not not necessarily any nodes or anything with this setup. What's just going to happen is is the further up I go, uh, the less intense the lights are going to get. But you see, it does light all right. And each one of these take about eight volts before they start illuminating. And there's four of them in parallel. And you know, though they were you know to get equivalent light out of each one of those, you, I mean, you probably got to feed each one of them. You know, a couple hundred milliamps. Um, at that voltage, you got four of them, so that's kind of impressive right there. But I've basically already shown it with the lights off. I've got 
the same load it's all the way up at the top now close to the shunt as I can get it <clears throat> cut it back on not as bright not as bright but they still light so see that's how it works out here if I move them lower down they get brighter so I brought back the little grain of wheat bulb and it's actually a lot better showing what's going on here in this particular setup because uh, it takes so little power but still is incandescent um, but it actually did burn one of these out um, driving it at too much power moving the arc around and I, I was trying to get it as bright as I could and I got it a little bit too bright and it popped <clears throat> which I thought was pretty cool um, so I'm going to be cranking this one at, with a little less power still got the LEDs up there at the very top as close to the shunt as I can get it got that fluorescent down there touching one side and just clipped on to the other it's still going to sort of just barely light uh, which is still sort of good to know and then also in parallel as a load this little guy here that I'm going to show I'm going to move him around so right now I'm going to clip right here <clears throat> and then right there so I'm going to move it around and sort of you can see the intensity of it I'm, I guess I'm going to try to uh, cut the lights down a little bit So, yeah, we've got all three of those going at the same time along that bar. And you can see there's a certain distance that I move these leads apart, even on the same side here. That because uh, I mean, it's it's all this. It really doesn't matter what's. There's no side here. It's all one long bar. But you can see, so far as I get to a certain distance um, apart on the leads, and I start to see power going through here. This little filament. It's pretty cool. I guess another kind of cool way to show it, which would be what you might expect, is you know, I've placed this little neon directly in series on the legs of the little grain of wheat bulb. Now, you know, since I'm lighting a fluorescent also a little bit, essentially in parallel, that's not so surprising. But just to show, I mean, it's not really a distance thing, and in, in nodes, you know, really, it's not because they're at different locations <clears throat> along the uh, bars there because this is directly across the legs but you will see I, it will light a little bit in parallel with that one being lit just to show kind of what's going in there I mean well let me just go ahead and cut it off So you can see basically what's happening and it's it's a little reminiscent of what goes on with the with the filament in the bulb here where at one point you know you you've got an arc that wants to jump across in there and another point you've got that little filament that wants to glow um, and here you've got high voltage pulses that are hitting this little light here getting it to light up but you're also able to see the uh, pulses inside this guy right here. 
So it's not really like this little tiny bulb here, which would burn out if I fed it a little bit harder, is able to light up steady at, you know, 60 or so volts, which is what it would take to get this to start illuminating thereabouts. It's not like it's sustaining that, you know, it's just high frequency, high voltage pulses through, for very short durations where you can see it <clears throat> hitting both of these bulbs at the same time. It might not be the exact same time, um, but I mean, that's pretty much what's going on. Um, so all of these loads are getting that high voltage pulse, even though you should have ideally, you know, in a, in a normal, I guess, DC setup, you'd have, you know, you should have zero volts across here, something like that. So it's pretty cool.